Hello everyone and welcome back to Alan Wake 2. This is episode 2. Last time we returned to Bright Falls. We received an invitation. One that Saga Anderson was all too excited to indulge herself in. She's hooked on this story and wants to figure it out. Uh, we just got attacked by Nightingale who got up without a heart because the pages deemed it so. And we're about to read this manuscript page that we pulled out of his chest cavity. So let's proceed with the game and see what happens. Saga was back at Cauldron Lake. Saga had to pursue Nightingale into the overlap. Finding a way in would be difficult. A ritual. Saga would learn how. Stop the monster. Back at Cauldron Lake. Okay. Ooh, this is cool. Okay. You can start. You can see all of the different ones. So Saga fights Nightingale with light. The autopsy room was a mess. Like a bomb had gone off. Nightingale hunted Saga. Didn't see her under the light. Lurched past her. The Taken could not see into bright light. The light hurt them. Hurt the darkness in them. Made them vulnerable. I flick the switch. It goes click. Show me the clicker. Lights are off, but somebody's home. Hemingway brought you here, witch. Get out of my house! Nightingale shouted. A wave of terror crashed through Saga's head. The awful truth. Nightingale had no heart in his chest, but here he was. Killing. A monster. The world had lurched out of balance. You found yourself trapped on the far side of the mirror. I love that we get um, the dialogue that is said by Nightingale as well, talking about like the clicker as well. So we've got like stuff from the previous game where Alan finds his little childhood clicker thing. So they're talking about that. Saga pursues Nightingale. Saga was back at Cauldron Lake. He was there too. Nightingale was, but wasn't a taken, a creature of darkness. He was beyond her reach, where some other strange reality, the dark place, merged with ours. This place in the dark place, a tarp thrown over top, drowning everything beneath it, a flood of darkness, soaking into everything, spoiling it, rotting it. The page called this area an overlap. Saga had to pursue Nightingale into the overlap. Finding a way in would be difficult. Required precise steps, a ritual. Saga would learn how. Stop the monster before he killed again. Her job, he'd be inside, waiting for her. I like how when you pick up the manuscript pages, it gives you like a little bit of it. For those that don't go into the menu, they still get like the gist of what's going on. But I love getting the full page for sure. That's really cool. Nightingale attacked us. Very interesting photo there. Who took that? <laughs> a dead man turned into a monster. Light as a way to fight him. Pages predicting the future. There's no rational explanation. This is the case we must solve. Where did Nightingale go? Nightingale attacked us. A corpse attacked us. I used his sensitivity to light to fight him off, but he got away. I need to hunt him down and figure out what the fuck is going on here. And here's our pages. <clears throat> the overlap. What? These pages aren't making sense. And according to the page, it sounds like Nightingale went back to Cauldron Lake and he's a Taken. So... I like the tarp mention when we're trying to approach the body to examine it for the first time. It's like, what's the bet they put a tarp up? There's a different kind of tarp going on here. Uh, the radio has given us uh, Follow You Into the Dark as well, which was the song that played at the end of that chapter, which is cool. Love it. All right. The page places Nightingale back at Cauldron Lake. Calls him a Taken. We need to head over there, stop him, before anyone else gets hurt. Okay. 
You know what I really love about Casey is they don't do that element of, um, ah, Saga, you're insane. Believing words on a page. None of this is real. You're losing your mind. Like, I really like that he goes for the straight up. He's just like, okay, let's, let's go and let's do that thing. It doesn't play that angle of like him being in constant denial where he's shutting out the stuff that's happening to him, you know, cause that's, you'll usually, when you're just getting the supernatural thrown at you, you'll have like the character or the partner or something that is just like constantly gating the progress by being like, no, like none of this is real. (laughs) Like you can't possibly believe that he's back at the lake. Uh, but he just, he goes along with it. Very supportive. But also, Saga is in charge, so. Did you get spooked by the bodies? Sheriff Breaker disappeared. Nightingale turned into some sort of a monster, and there are offices down. You two handle things here. We need to get back to Cauldron Lake immediately. Fuck me. That's terrible. We'll do what we can, man. You, did they acknowledge the body on the ground? They're like, we heard shooting. Did you get scared by the body? I'm like, you two can see the officer on the floor, right? Surely. It won't open. Like, officers down, guys? Interesting. Okay. But that's crazy, right, Thornton? Nightingale's heart was missing. How could he do anything? He's dead. Yeah, right. Well, that's all crazy talk. Monsters aren't real, and what do you mean the the sheriff disappeared? Like, poof? He's gone like magic? Magic's not real. Magic's not real. Right, Mulligan? No, Thorn. Monsters aren't real, and magic's definitely not real. I knew that. There they are. There are. They are looking and investigating the body, so they are acknowledging that it's there. Um, I love these two. I fucking love these two. These are our ones that are in straight up denial of the things that happen, but they have also haven't experienced it. They just heard the gunshots. They're a fine pair. <laughs> well, uh, luckily they didn't get weirdly suspicious because they're like, well, there's dead bodies here and you're the only guys left. But there is a corpse that disappeared and also a sheriff. Good day. Ooh, that guy was able to pay his speeding fine. Oh, he's here now. He's moved to the other computer. <laughs> Just a moment, ma'am. Someone will be right with you. The, the, whoever is on duty as the receptionist is just like, ah, uh, not my job. Meanwhile, the phone is eternally ringing. Would anyone like me to get it for them? I'll answer the phone. Do we have a... Uh, I was seeing if we had new emails. No, I'll keep checking your emails for you as well, guys. I'll do your admin work if you need. <laughs> How many times do we have to do this, Walter? Huh? I'm at my wits end with you. I want out. Something bad's going down. I can feel it. Let me out. Okay, this man's still freaking out. Someone else new is in here now. It's not opening. All right, let's get out of here then. Nightingale and his cult are dangerous. We need to be prepared in case things escalate more than they already have. Can you call it in, Casey? A smart choice, Anderson. Yeah, a- Agent Casey here. Yeah, we need backup. The Bright Falls case. Whoever you can spare, ASAP. Think we'll actually find Nightingale at the lake? The pages haven't been wrong yet. We can't assume the person writing these pages isn't playing us. I agree. 
but it's our best lead. I'm gonna take a quick look around. Meet you back at the car. See you in a bit. Person that's scared of crosswalks? Interesting. And doesn't know where he is. This character's gonna come up later. Hello. How are you? God, everyone's so fucking weird here. Alan, my boy, what have you done to the town? And boy, do we have some breaking news that's sure to knock your socks off. Davis Family Beef Jerky will now be available at the Sunday Market in three delicious flavors. That's right, our favorite sponsor, Davis Family Beef Jerky, can now be enjoyed in smoked hickory, teriyaki, and hickory teriyaki. I handed out samples here at the Valhalla Nursing Home and thought I'd catch up with one of our residents to get her thoughts. Donna, how are you? I've got chronic back pain from my spinal stenosis. Oh dear. You know, when I'm feeling stiff, I find a light snack helps. So, did you try that beef jerky? No. Lunch is at 11, and I wanted to save my appetite because today was the fish soup with crackers. You're allowed up to four crackers, but I only take one unless I have a glass of cranberry juice. They ran out of cranberry juice at breakfast, which is at 7. I didn't take the oatmeal today because it makes me gassy before cribbage, and I can't... So you didn't try the jerky. Got it. Well, that's too bad, Donna. Their new teriyaki flavor sure does hit the spot. They had teriyaki salmon with rice on Friday's dinner menu. Dinner's at five, but we all know the salmon takes longer to prepare, and then you're late for bingo. And who needs all that spice? I agree. Teriyaki is a shit flavor. Who? Who's that? Tapio? How are you on the line? I couldn't end the call. You've been on the phone this entire time? Yes, and I hate teriyaki. Well, it's delicious on jerky. So, let's give a big thank you to Wendy Davis for these samples. Wendy? No, that can't be right. Wendy went missing in 2010. I heard she's dead. No, I'm, I'm referring to Wendy Davis from our sponsor, Davis Family Beef Jerky. Wendy Davis, that's the dead one. She's dead. Right, well, that's our time. Remember to keep your coffee warm and your chin up because that sun shines right around the corner. <laughs> Pat Main, signing off. Oh my god, okay. <laughs> Just casually being like, that's the dead one. I couldn't end the call. <laughs> All right. As usual, it's always worth listening to the radio and watching the TVs. Is that a good poll? Is that a really good pole that you see there? Oh, you're getting real close to that pole. Okay, what's she looking at, you reckon? Is she peeking on that guy? I reckon she's peeking on that dude. Mayor Setter won't roll over on the issue. Setter for mayor. The abandoned voting booth, okay. I'm not voting booth, but you know what I mean. Take a look at our map and see what else is going on around here. We've got a question mark point of interest um, in the Palace Lodge, which is good. I think that's what we'll check out. Hang on. Oh, hang on. Investigation. Wait. Should I actually... Maybe I should actually click on this. Mercetta won't roll over on the issues. So that'll come up on the map to actually investigate. I wonder if that comes up later or something. It's good to know that if you walk past something and you miss it, it'll mark it on the map for you. Did you check out the town, Anderson? Just getting my bearings. Ready to go? Waiting on you. 
Okay, the car can be used to travel between locations, so you can go in and out. I like that. Um, so we'll check out the point of interest in the lodge before we head off. Okay, I can't find anything in relation to a point of interest, so I'm assuming it's just the car? Um, it's like, on the map here, separate from the car, but it might just be the car. Because... <laughs> I'm looking around, nothing's interactable or standing out. So we will just get into the car and we'll go to Goldred Lake. I need to come clean, Anderson. I know why Nightingale was here 13 years ago. He was chasing a writer, Alan Wake. Tammy mentioned him. She's writing a book on his disappearance. You know the detective character from his books, Alex, Casey. Yeah, I've heard the jokes at the office. Cold case Casey, murder case Casey. <laughs> Sorry. Ha ha, it's the same name, similar job. It's the first thing anyone thinks of. It annoyed me, but that was it. Then 10 years ago, I started getting strange letters in the mail, fragments of Crows describing murders. You've heard the stories about what happened in New York. Some of it, at least. Bodies started to pile up. It was a murder cult. Turns out the fragments sent to me were from the crime books of Alan Wake. The cult was copycatting the murders from the books. In their heads, they were performing a ritual to bring Wake back. Their imagined prophet... After that case, I started looking into Wake's disappearance on the side. And you thought this case might be connected to him? His name does keep popping up. I just wanted you to have all the facts. Next time, give them to me before we find ourselves in the middle of a horror story. Yeah, interesting information to withhold there, Casey. He's like, yeah, I didn't know why Nightingale was here. He just kind of vanished. We've got another car here, too. Someone else is here. The Heart. Okay, return to. Gotcha. The page says Nightingale's in something called an overlap. Need to figure out exactly what that means. I'm happy I'm not in charge of this mess. Thanks. Let's start looking for Nightingale where he was killed. Now that is some gorgeous lighting right there. Beautiful. Okay. So that was the, like, the end of a chapter, and then it gives you, like, an intro segment to the next chapter. Great. This area is supposed to be close to the public. <laughs> yeah. FPC number plate, though. I wouldn't call them the public. Interesting. Okay. Oh, it's about to get juicy. AWE in progress. We might be able to check out the rental cabins this time and find the other lunchboxes. Ooh, there's a bike here too. Guys, Norman Reedus is going to show up. No motorized vehicles. Yeah, okay. Oh, I've gotten myself stuck. The writer of these pages knows what will happen. Because they're behind this, or because they can see what's coming. Impossible things are happening here. A world operating on different rules. I need to understand this strange logic. To see the clues. To solve the case. I love her self-narration. It's very good. Okay, so we're heading back through the shortcut area. So if we have a look on the map. Uh, FBC buzzer, the FBC station. Okay, we have marked points of interest, which is cool. We're heading back to the murder site. I'm wondering if we're able to go to the rental cabins or if the game's gonna be like, nope. I might just pop back there, we'll see. If I'm allowed. See you later, Casey.
one of these days I'll say, all right, Casey, I'm just going to take a look around, see you later, and then we'll never see him again. <laughs> we'll split up, and then we'll be separated. All right, so I think down here? All right, we'll try and go down here and see if the game turns me around or not. It turned me around. <laughs> I need to go back. Got a case to solve. Okay. You cannot go anywhere and do anything in the world of Alan Wake 2. You must play by the rules. We'll get to the rental cabins eventually, guys. Oh my god. Stop trying to go there. Jeez. <laughs> uh, when you just want to explore everything. All right. We've got to try and keep to the path. And then branch out occasionally. Whoa. Ah, oh, look at that visa. I more about the cult of the tree. What sort of cult refers to themselves as a cult? In my experience, they don't. We're not seeing the full picture yet. Oh, the FBC station is being looked at. These are our group. Hey, hello there. How are you folks doing? Those restricted area signs don't do a damn thing, huh? Hello, Saga Anderson. Are you two supposed to be here? I'm Ilmo Koskela. Fantastic to meet you. And yes, Stephen here hired me to show him through the woods. He's in town on important government business. Fixing this impressive piece of hardware. I work for the FBC, ma'am. I'm authorized to be here. And I bet you two are here about that murder. Nasty stuff. How's it going? They actually brought in fucking Ilmo as a character from his adventure tours. Like, he actually got hired. That's amazing. How did you hear about the murder, Ilmo? Do you know anything that could help us? People tend to tell me things. The Koskala brothers are kind of a household name around here. Speaking of, uh, if you're looking for some fun, stop by Watery. Just down the road from Bright Falls, there's our Coffee World Amusement Park. There's Sauna, Sauna de Vista. <laughs> and we offer a variety of guided tours, hunting, fishing, hiking, whatever strikes your fancy. You name it, we probably got it. I love that. Casey, you want to go to Coffee World? <laughs> <laughs> what is this thing? It's just a monitoring station, ma'am. The Federal Bureau of Control checks volcanic activity and air toxicity levels. No need to worry, though. It's mostly for research purposes. That's one gorgeous wetter saga. <laughs> Looks Nordic. I bet a family member made it. My mother made this sweater for me. How do you know? I knew it. My mom used to knit those sweaters for me and my brother. Watery, my hometown, was founded by Finnish immigrants. So between your name and the sweater, I figured your family might be from Finland too. Suomi, Finland. Ulla, Karjalan <laughs> Close. My mom's family is from Sweden originally. I don't know much about them beyond that. The sweater is just something to remember her by. Interesting. Okay, so it doesn't really have much of a family history knowledge, but I love the, the Finnish ties that Remedy puts in. <laughs> Stephen, we're investigating a murder that occurred nearby. What can you tell me about your bureau? Nothing that isn't classified, I'm afraid. But I don't know anything about a murder. Operations here are run by a different department. I'm just here to make some repairs. The wiring on this thing frays every couple months. Yep, that's the raccoons. They grow real big here with teeth like you wouldn't believe. Can not run through a garbage can. Well, I need to get back to it. I love the concept of like this dude. What the hell is this? What'd you find there, Stephen? Uh, nothing. Just something that shouldn't be here. Raccoons my ass. Just the concept of like him hiring this fucking dude <laughs> to like show him around when he just needs to repair this thing. The Kalula Knights Motorcycle Club. There you go. So we figured out who the bike belongs to. 
Amazing. Okay. Let's get to the murder I'm side, Casey. I'm to get you VIP tickets into Coffee World. Just say the word. Thanks, but I don't drink coffee. We brew our own beer, too. Ahma beer. Oh, now we're talking. I just kind of... Oh, I can go in here. I just kind of want to, like, sit and listen to any dialogue that might come up. Let's take a look in here. Ooh, uh, confidential files, eh? I might just take a peek at this. Maintenance note. Clear signs of tampering. Signal was rerouted into a transmitter that is not one of ours. I fixed it, so any alerts will come our way, but it's definitely concerning. I'll make a report for the investigations department. Leaving this here in case I'm not the next person to fix this thing. If you're reading this, check for tampering. We may want to put more secure metal casing around the whole thing so that the raccoons can't get to it anymore. Stephen Lynn, Chief Technician. Very cool. Well, if you don't drink coffee, Stephen, whose coffee cup is that? Uh, we already found that lunchbox, so that's cool. Enjoy, guys. All right, let's head back down. A lot of things about this case keep bothering me. But one thing feels really off. Breaker's disappearance. I don't get the feeling Nightingale was responsible. Hmm. He was about to give you more of those pages. Hmm. Something didn't want us to have them? Or was protecting him from Nightingale? Spontaneous combustion? I don't know. I... Not the kind of disappearance we normally solve. Our crime scene's drowning. I never minded rain. Feels like home. No sign of Nightingale. But the page did place him at Cauldron Lake in an overlap. So how do we follow him there? Maybe something around here will tell us. Casey's second mention of rain and home. Monsters, overlaps. Rituals? What do you make of all of this? Mm -hmm. The killers are usually the ones performing the ritual, not the detective. Acting out their sick fantasy. They may be trying to get you involved, forcing you into their twisted world. But with dead men coming alive, the word ritual starts to have more weight behind it. We need to look around, learn what this ritual is. After we find Nightingale, what then? I've never arrested a monster. I've watched you arrest plenty of monsters, Anderson. You know what I mean. Monster monsters. Light worked against him at the morgue. That might be the only way to stop him from hurting anyone else. Okay. And we've got the symbol underneath him on the table. We've seen this symbol before. Hmm. Good eye. Ooh. Bare feet. Nightingale. I'll see where these footprints lead. Can you come through the crime scene one more time, KC? Just in case. On it. If anything comes up, I'll radio you. Yeah, can you look over the crime scene that is literally drowning? <laughs> Very interesting. Did we check the dumpster? I'm surprised that we didn't even check in the dumpster. It's got my curiosity um, peaked if there is like new things to interact with in previously explored like buildings, you know? Like this was here before. Yeah. Never know. I don't understand how the new areas work yet if the game's gonna update over time. We do have points of interest in the general store. So I will check out said general store. We, oh, 
And these are, we've got more footprints. They go off that way, so we'll be going this way. Points of interest. Damn, the way that this game changes its, uh, its lighting on you, like, it's getting darker. I love the fact that we're not, like, locked into that one time of day. Like, it genuinely feels like the longer you're here, you're watching the sun go down, it's getting darker, the lights are coming on, and it just happens, like, gradually around you. It's really beautiful. And haunting. Can it be both at the same time? Of course it can. Um, so, point of interest. Why isn't he talking to me over the walkie-talkie? <laughs> She's 14, Casey. Okay, so... Where do I get her? Get her a book. Something weird and dark. Maybe that'll get her back into reading. Okay. At the start, no dialogue coming through the speaker, which was weird. So the point of interest at the, uh, the inn didn't have anything. And then there's points of interest in here as well. Uh, I can't even interact with that because that's locked, but there's a point of interest behind the door. Okay, so it's locked. Is there something I need to do with points of interest that I'm like not seeing? Because we've taken a photo of this already. You'd expect if there was something um, that you'd already discovered, it wouldn't show up. Is this the point of interest? Whatever this fucking thing is, should I shoot it? <laughs> I don't know how accurate the point of interest is on the actual map. Is it this? Because it says don't forget, update code, and there's like a couple of like numbers that are all crossed out there. But then you'd think that would be associated with this and that safe has already been opened. Um, I'm struggling with this whole point of interest thing because I'm like, let's go check out the point of interest, but then nothing's there. And that's happened to us twice now. So it's just making me concerned about missing things. I'm going in there, taking a look, and then I can't do anything about it yet. So perhaps I'm jumping the gun. We'll focus on the footprint trail. Maybe I should call David, see how Logan's doing. They're fine, Anderson. What's got you so worried? I just feel bad being gone so long. I've never taken a case this far from them. Ah, they can manage without you for a few days. <sighs> I've already been up here. The tracks lead into the water. Where'd you go from here? I'd expect you'd go back to that tree, but maybe. Oh, okay. I can feel something. <laughs> A presence. That cheap. Nightingale isn't far. Cheap Alan Wake jump scare. I know Nightingale is somewhere around Cauldron Lake. The tree was a threshold. This place and the dark place. <laughs> You're in over your head. Next stop, Caldera Street Station. The threshold, like a doorway, leading to Nightingale. It's somehow connected to a tree, which is ladle. Caldera Street Station, huh?
The tree could mean which is ladle, but what's at a threshold to? The overlap? Those these footprints weren't here before. Nightingale came this way. I'm on the right trail. Okay, for some reason the radio keeps saying, hey, you've got new stuff, and so does the TV, but we don't. This is all blocked off. What is that? Seems like it's reacting to the light. These aren't the same tracks that were here before. They're headed into the tree, not out of it. You can toggle flashlight boost to increase damage to darkness and burn through dark substance. There it is. There's why we have all our batteries. My flashlight burned the dark stuff away. It was covering another page. The fuse was in place. Saga stepped into the witch's hut. Inside, a bright light. There were objects that stood out to Saga, as if the light had manifested them. The witch's hut. Okay. I trust the pages to lead me to the overlap. So... I think what we have to establish here is in the first game, Zane in some sort of chicken and egg scenario created Alan Wake potentially, but then maybe Alan Wake created Zane stuff. It was just weird in that sense that it's like, we've got Zane writing things about Alan Wake's childhood. And then so raises the question of was Alan Wake brought into the world because Zane wrote him into existence? And then we've also got this situation where Alan is trapped in the dark place and he is, he's, he's gone on that keyboard on that typewriter. And, you know, we had, we played American nightmare recently as well. And he was dealing with Mr. Scratch and he was stuck in dealing with that. So Mr. Scratch wouldn't replace him in the real world and go and be with Alice um, and then you've got this situation where Alan's back to writing and he's writing about this person, Saga Anderson. And in that sense, he's created this character for his story and Saga doesn't know about her family. It's kind of like, I don't really know much about what's going on there. And then you've got Alex Casey, who is one of Alan Wake's creations in these books and then you've got Alex Casey, the person that's like, ah, yeah, the books, yeah, so similar job, blah, 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 that kind of weird stuff. And it's just like, I love that element that it's like these characters are placed in this story that are, with a question mark over their head, created by Alan Wake uh, or otherwise. It's just like a, a really cool thing to, to think about that it's like the characters are being written into this story and it's like a weird meta thing where you've got like the game is being made and the characters are being written specifically for this story. So, you know, there's elements of their characters that are mysterious. And then it's also a second level of mystery because Alan Wake is writing them into this story as well. I don't know if that makes any sense, what I just fucking said. But to, too long, didn't listen. Uh, to summarize, I think it's fucking cool that... Alan Wake or like this typewriter has the power to just create things. And it's so incredibly dangerous, but the dark place loves a good story. <laughs> and the fact that you can play as this character that our origins are completely written and made up by Alan Wake, essentially. And I love that Casey is here too, because it just makes it even better. 
Nightingale's trail led to another page. Oh yeah, I've got to listen to this page too. Is Witch's Ladle the doorway into the overlap? If so, that's where I'll find Nightingale. The fuse was in place. She found it among the junk in the forest. Saga stepped inside the witch's hut. Something rushed through her. A presence. Familiar. She couldn't quite place it. Something long forgotten. She tried to hold on to it, but it was already gone. Inside, a bright light. Saga felt safe, like nothing could hurt her here. There were objects that stood out to Saga as if the light had manifested them, pulled them from the darkness. A shift in reality, heavy with hidden meanings. A coffee thermos, a shoebox, a mop and a bucket, a poster on the wall, and in the cabinet, another manuscript page. A mop in the bucket is uh, is control, right? That's the janitor. <laughs> the shoebox is where the clicker was found. <laughs> it's like you're trying to list, like catch on to all of these things. Is this implying light can affect reality? Nightingale was chased off by my flashlight. Light is the key. To stay safe. But for something more to be revealed as well. I think the page is trying to tell me where to find the fuse. It must be somewhere near the witch's hut. We're dealing with an organized group of killers, not a lone serial killer. Oh. The cold of the tree is behind these murders. I've already done that. This case just began. <laughs> That's so weird. Why didn't that up? Now it's updated all of these again. That's strange. Um, I already did this. These stashes. Now I gotta do this again for some reason. It reset my cases. Did it reset my lunchboxes as well? No. But this one... Uh, yeah. How much do you need in Bright Falls? We got seven in Bright Falls, okay. Background cases. I need to know more about the code of the tree if I'm going to shut them down. Yeah, Jesus, I already, this is so weird. I already done this. <sighs> okay, now there is some new stuff in here. As in like some clues that we haven't placed in yet. Nope. Nope. Victim of cult killing became a monster. Um, <sighs> cult goal? Think. Victim's body, organs covered in writing. Oh, this would be like symbols? Nope. Psychology. <laughs> I'm good at this. Oh, occult ritual, what is it? Duh. It's like right there. <laughs> Nightingale was the only victim to become a monster. <clears throat> so far... The cult of the tree is performing rituals to create monsters. Ugh. Oops. Uh, goal? Is goal. Okay. <laughs> there you go. Okay, so we've got some new stuff in there. Um, hopefully that stays. I need to find the witch's hut. Nothing's been solved yet. 
no deductions to be made. This is the witch's hut. described the hut being lit and mentioned a fuse. Anderson, thought I saw something in the woods. Probably just a deer, but I'm gonna check it out. Okay, I found another page. Following up on a lead. Keep checking in. Roger. We're separated. This fuse is busted. This one looks good. People should really stop littering, though. Okay. Is this somewhere that we can explore that I haven't yet? Down here as well? Just before we put the fuse in? Where does this go? I don't know if we've actually gone down here. Oh, nice. We got a lunchbox. Oh, I can't go further though. Okay, hang on. Maybe we'll have to wait for the the rain to subside and then eventually this pathway will become accessible and we'll be able to check out the rest of the map here or because look, we got the Witchfinder Station, and this is all rain right now. So perhaps, eventually, this will not be submerged, and we'll actually be able to go down here and get the lunchbox. Alright, well, we'll have to leave a pin in that. We'll, we'll be coming back here later. break room is a place where you can save your progress. It's taken us till now to get to like a save room. Another how page. how interesting is that? Making progress. I love this, like the food and the thermos and you can do a little save. Our first save. The image of the witch in the sign. Saga addressed the witch, the smudged line on the heart, the second part recited from memory. I brought you the heart, witch. Show me the terror. Saga pushed the heart through the hole in the sign. Yo, okay. Going back to the sign of the witch and putting the heart through the hole. Oh, that's, that is cool. Okay. Witch's ladle. Towering over Saga, watching her and the witch. The image of the witch in the sign. Nightingale's heart, a cold, dead lump in her hand. Her definition of sanity had changed since she arrived in this town. But she trusted the pages. Was forced to. Saga addressed the witch. She squinted to read the first part of the ritual words. The smudged line on the heart. The second part recited from memory. The words she had read on the page. 
I brought you the Heart Witch. Show me the terror. Saga pushed the heart through the hole in the sign. This was the key. The tree was the threshold. That's so cool. Uh, so the writing on the heart itself. Reciting it from memory. All right. Uh, do we have the heart? <laughs> Is Saga carrying a heart in her pocket right now? So Casey saw something in the woods, thinks it's a deer. I'm going to go check it out, which uh, is always a good sign. Unless I've, we have to go back to Bright Falls to get the heart to then come back here. I like that it's marked as break room. Okay, I think I need to go get the heart then, don't we? We didn't decide to bring it with us, you know, just spontaneously. Got all the noises. I hear glass shattering. Oh, the door's open. For Jesus. It was a deer. Oh, fucking hell. Jesus, what's busted open a door for us? Whoa! Oh my god. <laughs> the, the fact that Saga's fuck is like paused. Oh my god. That's one that's one way to censor it. <laughs> Holy shit! Like Nightingale. Using painkillers will allow you to heal. Quick to consume, but a smaller health benefit. You can quick slot your stuff too. Oh, you've got to actually equip it and then pop them pills. Okay. Wow. The fucking deer jump scare then coupled with a cold of the tree jump scare right after that. Fucking hell. <laughs> we disturbed his nap. Oh, inventory slot upgrade. Oh, and a shotgun. Ah, uh, check with Lady Fortuna at the counter. So this must be the point of interest that we couldn't figure out before. So it was the the thing. So is the point of interest? Let's take a look. Okay. So on this map, it has the point of interest, right? But 
the point of interest is shown on the map even when you're not even able to interact with it yet, um, which is a little bit, can be a little bit annoying because especially when you're like, okay, cool, let's go here. And then you can't do anything. So you just get confused and then you can do it later. <laughs> so there you go. So now we can see uh, this one. So don't forget, update the code. Uh, Lotto Washington. And Madam Agnieszka, palm reading and crystal ball gazing interpreter of dreams. Um, 202 And then Stefan B. Monday. And then there's a bunch of, there's like letters there as well. Interesting. Um, so as you can see, okay, so looking at here, they've got 705, 713, 717, 723, and they're all crossed out. Logically, 739 would be the code, I think, going in that sequence and the numbers that are crossed out. So I think 739 should net us this shotgun. Oh, and 723 was the last one. It's mine, baby. And of course it takes up two slots. Classic. All right. Very, very cool. You can quick slot weapons from the inventory and quick slot healing items, which we will do now because now I understand how this works. So we'll do that. And then we'll put the uh, trauma pad on that one. So we'll have healing on the bottom. We'll quick slot the pistol. And quick slot. Shotgun. Cool. All right, so we've got two shots there. Amazing. We've got a manuscript page. Is that shotgun shells? That is shotgun shells. All right, it's all happening. We're being slowly drip, fe drip fed the action, and I love it. I'm on the edge of my seat. Oh. Okay, weird. Um, so this manuscript page is from return one. So again, the manuscript pages are always found out of order. <laughs> Saga at the general store. Saga edged toward the broken door, her gun ready, flashlight aimed ahead. Nightingale said it would be here. The Cauldron Lake general store was overgrown, left to rot. Saga thought about the cult of the tree they had been here, waiting, planning a gruesome ritual murder. Meanwhile, they played cards in the general store, like it was just another late-night poker game. Saga stepped closer to the door. Had the animal broken it? There was a loud crash. Saga found herself face to face with a cultist, a hulking figure in a raincoat. We watch in the night, wild eyes behind a plastic deer mask, an axe in his raised hand. Uh, more cult symbols. So be prepared for jump scares. <laughs> um, the I solution th has to be in here. The solution for what? Pretty sure we read this when we were here last time. Oh, the solution for the safe? Is she just saying that out of order? Silly saga, we already figured it out. Okay, that was fun. Uh, <laughs> largely enjoyable. Um, oh, hang on. Are we missing a container? Oh, right by the page. Right by the page. Thank you, map. Very cool. Okay. Um, so the points of interest are now gone. That's very nice. Um, I guess we'll head back to the murder site. OK, 
Casey has not checked in with us yet. He said that he would. He said he was investigating the deer. I'm surprised we're not even radio radioing him. guys are gone, but you've left everything, like, open. That doesn't feel like a good idea. You didn't even, like, lock up the station. Or, like, close that off. Which makes me think maybe they didn't leave voluntarily. Because that seems like a serious oversight. Damn, how fucking bizarre that, like, when you're down there, it's, like, really grim and dark, and, like, you're like, okay, cool, the sun is set, but you get up there, and it's, like, not like that at all. It's just the effect that the, uh, the lighting has on you down there. I'm assuming we're heading back to go get the heart. I just don't know where Casey is. Bike and the van are still here, though. And yeah, I can't get into my car without Casey. What's happening? What are we? What are we not doing? I think I've maybe I've just like, completely gone in the wrong direction because I know it was telling us about the the witch sign, but we couldn't interact with it. Oh, because I might have to do this first. <laughs> Oops. Uh. The page from the witch's hut seems to be describing some kind of ritual. Shit, I think I was supposed to do this first. Uh, this is why it's so important to check the case board. Uh, I found a page talking about a ritual at the witch's ladle. Is this how Nightingale got past the rock? Is that the entrance to the overlap? <clears throat> To get into the overlap, I need to find Nightingale's heart. Read the line imprinted on it, plus the line on the page to the witch's ladle sign. Then push the heart through the hole in the sign. Yes. Nightingale's heart disappeared from the morgue. Where is it now? Oh, a profiling time, okay. So when you're not sure where to go, check your fucking case board. <laughs> I need Nightingale's heart to get to the overlap. Where is it? The cultist leaned close. He was there, but he was risen. Nightingale was there. The opposite of sunspots. Who said that? That's not it. I don't have what I need to find Nightingale's heart. There must be more. Oh, this is cool. I like that there's profiling that, like doesn't actually lead anywhere, but it gives you some cool stuff. Nightingale's heart. Where is it? Meanwhile, they played cards in the general store. The witch had stolen his heart. Get out of my house. Nightingale's heart is at the general store, in a fridge. Back to the general store it is then. Okay, why is it there? Who put that there? I need to check the general store for the heart. Fuck. <laughs> okay, back. Casey, I'm headed to the general store. I think I know how to get into the overlap. Uh, roger that. 
I followed some ATV tracks in the woods and got a bit turned around. Did you get lost? I've only been lost once in my life, Anderson. The years I spent with my ex-wife. I'll find my way back, don't you worry about it. Alright, so Casey's on the trail of something. Uh, we've run all the way back here for no reason. <laughs> yeah, but we have our destination in mind. Um, and that's when dialogue comes in. When we progress the case board. I think to explain my actions, it really is like that sort of element of immersion in the game itself. That you f forget about the mind palace for a little while and you're just walking through and you're just trying to navigate and investigate the world. That there is like a bit of you that like forgets to check in in that sense um so we went to the general store and did the whole thing <laughs> um but because we hadn't done the profiling uh, this element was missing from our visit to said general store so let's go open the fridge We've got a few fridges here. I'd assume it would be, yeah. Okay, there we go. So you need to do the profiling first. The text on the heart is clearer now. Legible. The wave crashed on the far side of the mirror. Sounds literary, but what does it mean? I think I walked by an abandoned general store near the murder site, and how is this possible? Did the page do this? I feel like I recognize this. The fridge. The heart. I knew it would be here. Like I saw it in a dream. Mmm. And now he can now perform the, the ritual. Makes total sense. That <laughs> makes total sense. Found the heart in the fridge. Just like the page said I would. The page is no all. Right. Casey, there are cultists in the area. They're taken, like Nightingale. Watch yourself out there. Yeah, thanks for the heads up. I'm still finding my way back. You have the worst sense of direction. <laughs> Any city in America I can get through drunk and blindfolded. It's these damn trees. Okay, okay. I'm en route to Witch's Ladle. I need to perform a ritual to open the overlap. This case just keeps getting weirder, but it is exciting. Okay, well, we're about to get pretty decently separated from Casey by opening the overlap and... Oh my god, there's like, the trees are in the shape of people sometimes, it freaks me the fuck out. Wait, okay, no, there are people. Okay. Oh my god. Wait, it's that guy! It's the fucking guy that was in town. That looks like he didn't know where he was going. Gotta really fucking their face up, huh? Fucking monsters. Dude. That was the guy who was lost. He didn't know where he was looking and he was scared of the crossing. All right, it's time, Nightingale's heart. So, okay, I hope Casey's gonna be okay. I hope he's like a dual wielding pistol type. <laughs> he's like, don't worry, I've got 
bullet time. <laughs> wave crashed on the far side of the mirror. I brought you the heart witch. Show me the terror. Okay, Saga. Going in solo. What did you expect, Saga? You've crossed over to the, th the other side. You've gone through the threshold. Okay. Wait. What? Huh? Wait. The tree's in front of us now. We just came from the tree. Logan? Logan! Where are you? Oh no. What the fuck was that? Logan's back in Virginia. You're imagining things. Yeah, but remember what Rose said. Dude, what the fuck? Oh, because this is the overlap that like we're going in, we've come out one side of the tree. We're still going through the other side. We haven't actually left the tree yet. I don't think in that sense. This is the overlap. Worlds stacked on top of each other. Would you please help me? Oh, that's Alan! What was that? Oh, okay. <sighs> Alan's a force ghost. Oh my, okay, what? Okay. Did I get turned around? It's just- No, this is right. This place is looping. Like a nightmare. Need to find Nightingale. Nightingale enters the lake. The writer went into the lake, banished the dark presence. Taken still lurked in the woods. The dark place receded. The current pulled back those with darkness inside. Into the lake. Nightingale was there. One of them. The dark presence. Jagger had taken him. The witch had stolen his heart. They sank beneath the waves. The dark place, wandering in the shadows, muttering to themselves. It's dark. I'm lost. Where am I? Who am I? I can't remember. It's cold. Premium cabins for rent in Bright Falls. Who said that? Can you hear me? I need help. Please, stop this. What did I do? You must dig it out. 
Their shapes shifted, echoes of the writer's dreams, fading in, fading out. The next story and the story after that, the writer was writing again. The writer was writing again. <laughs> okay, so we're looping. I love that. We're just going to keep going into the tree and seeing uh, how many layers we're going into hell. Oh, that is fucking cool. Probably gonna say that's gonna be my most repeated sentence for this whole playthrough. That is fucking cool. Alright, it's different now. Hi. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> yeah. Hey. Hello? He's here, Nightingale. The fact that, like, this is a situation, it's kind of funny, I put my flashlight away instinctively because I'm like, you don't want to get seen, but it's like the light is literally your protective source. He has an aversion to the light. I was literally just like, okay, you don't want to be, you don't want to get seen. Turn off the light. I'm like, wait a minute, no. It's like they're coming in over a bad signal. Gotta keep repairing the uh, the FBC station and change the signal. <laughs> so the signal can be stronger. Dude. Nice. Nightingale's badge. Mm. Set to find the light switch. Show me the clicker. <laughs> Where are you? Caldera Station. We're moving into... Oh, wow. Not quite, but we're traveling. That is so visually impressive. It's just so cool. Oh, God, this is going to be a jump scare. <laughs> Okay, not a jump scare, a fight. Okay. Oh. Oh. You're supposed to aim. Okay. <laughs> so you're supposed to aim at that like glowing point. My brain's going headshot for massive damage, you know, and stunning them. And then you're supposed to stun them and then shoot them in their weak point for massive damage. It makes sense. Run! Oh. I have to get to safety. Oh! Oh! 
Why does the manuscript page keep showing up? I'm just burning my batteries away unnecessarily. I'm being followed. chest cavity on that bad boy. Oh. This is not how the story goes. I just fucking died. Like, that quick. <laughs> Holy shit. I just got fucking mopped up. Okay. Um, I think... So, look, the first time... I wasted too much light, I think, and I could damage him. And then the second time, I was like, I thought that pre mashing A and using the flashlight in that little grab was enough, but it wasn't. So we're just learning how not to waste our batteries and how to use our batteries effectively here. The combat is so, so much better in this game, though, compared to the original. Like, it's so much more engaging. There you go. Oh my god, look at this body. These trees do turn you around. Casey, I understand. Am I supposed to be beating him, I think? I don't know. It's giving me a lot of supplies. Bruh. Oh, I think I was supposed to avoid that. This feels like I'm wasting ammo. Fucking hell. I was like, am I running? Am I fighting? What the fuck? I didn't get to open one of those es uh, eskies. Who are you? What is this? Who are you? Did you hear me? I'm Saga Anderson, FBI. 
I can hear you. Cauldron Lake. Yes. I'm at Cauldron Lake. Where are you? Not to escape. In danger. The dark presence. Danger. Thanks. Got it. Yeah, I could have pieced that together myself, Alan. Are you okay? Oh, no! It's my fault! It got out with my face! Scratch! Sir, calm down. I'm gonna need you to take a breath. He's... he's changed the story. The d dark presence. We must stop it before... Easy now. First things first. What's your name? My name is Alan Wake. I'm a writer. I, I've been... Wake? Where did you come from? You've been missing for 13 years. 13. <laughs> All right. Oh, amazing. All right, another beautiful licensed song to close out. Chapter two, which was very cool. I think these chapters are very perfectly paced. I really like how much we're being given, how much we're able to explore and take it easy and just feel the goddamn game and the story that's being fed to us. Like I am fully immersed to the point where I was like, oops, where's that case board? I forgot about it because I'm too busy like walking through the forest being creeped out. Just amazing stuff. So Alan has resurfaced. We've also crossed over the threshold though. So I don't know what exactly is going on and where we are, but I love that he's like, he's come out and he's like, Mr. Scratch. You know, he's just like following up from that immediately. Anders, where did you go? All of a sudden the radio stopped working and then that flooding just disappeared. A crazy forest. Is this who I think it is? Casey, say hello to Alan Wake. Mr. Wake, this is Special Agent Alex Casey. He'll escort you to our car. Casey, I'll meet you there right after I take a look around. If the flooding's receded, there might be evidence we missed earlier. Okay. See you there. This is the first thing he's going to say. Alex Casey? Yeah, from my How? book. Am I still... Is this the dark place? No, it can't be. I got out. Yeah, the PI from your books has the same name as me. Great. Moving on. <laughs> okay. It's a bit of a height to the car, Wake. So get your bearings, then we'll head out. I just, I, I need another minute. Cauldron Lake. I thought I'd never see this place again. Take your time. But you should know these woods aren't the safest. Yeah. Uh, it's getting dark. You have a flashlight? It's not safe without a light. I have a light. And a gun. You can relax, Wake. And Pages. If you see pages of writing anywhere, you must take them and keep them safe. Our lives could depend on it. They have vital information. We know about the pages, Wake. We'll keep an eye out for them. Okay. Okay, just give me a moment. It's okay. Take your time. <laughs> I love that he's like, this character, Casey just hates this shit. But he like has to do it. So he's just like, just like, we know about this. I've got a light. We've got a gun. Like, we know about the pages, man. It's okay. <laughs> just take your time. It's amazing interactions here. Alan Wake has resurfaced. Uh, very, very exciting stuff. I'm so curious, uh, as always, to see how this is going to play out. And I, I'm going to bring this episode to a close as we finished the next chapter of the game. 
We'll see what happens next time. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you have enjoyed this second episode of the playthrough. Uh, I'm eating this stuff up and I just hope there's so much more to come uh, because it's a treat and it leaves you guessing constantly like what's around the corner, what's happening. And you're trying to, you're getting pieces of information from the previous games we've been playing and you're trying to piece it all together. But we all know that trying to piece together a remedy story as it's happening is a fool's errand. So we'll find out what happens as we play through. So thank you so much for joining me for this episode and I will see you next time.